we're very happy that that has created its 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 niche in Ohio and uh, looking to looking forward to see every single school in Ohio content to have a recognized pre-apprenticeship pathway. Um, pre-apprenticeship has to have a classroom or a, a lab setting. Um, it can involve worksite visits, job shadowing. It just has to have some sort of um, work experience or, or job shadowing experience. It's, it's a little more gray in, in set up than registered apprenticeship. Registered apprenticeship has regulation. It's very firm in what it has to be. Um, recognized pre-apprenticeship is, is a little more loose because it's training the, the individual, the youth or the adult for what it's going to be like to go into that registered apprenticeship. So current sponsors and pre-apprenticeship. Um, current approved sponsors include um, private employers, individual employers, like I said, groups, colleges, associations, state and local government, um, trades, unions, councils, you name it, we, we probably have it registered. Um, and if we don't, we'd love to. <laughs> the benefits for the employers is it does establish that, that pipeline of skilled workers. Um, it reduces the recruit, recruitment costs. It does create a customer mark, marketing tool. Um, it does increase the productivity of the employees it does reduce employee turnover costs because they're invested in being there and um, they know that you're invested in them. It does have a return on investment. There is a link below that you actually can see what the return on investment calculator is. If you'd like to um, copy that, you can check it out. And the benefits for apprentices, I mean, it's, it's a no brainer. It's, it's a high demand career opportunity. It's not just a job. Um, it's sustainable wa wages, benefits, marketable skills, <laughs> paid education, and uh, credential. It's an absolute win-win. I'm kind of rushing through these pieces because I want to get to the to the good stuff, the, the things that are happening. So we have over 200 occupations and growing registered, over 500 sponsors, over 19,000 registered apprentices, and that's like as of early April. Uh, about 5,000 new apprentices registered each year, about, I was going to say about 2,000 completed each year. Um, this is about 1,500. And there you go, as of April 6th, that's when that data was pulled. <laughs> okay, this is the good stuff. This is the stuff that I wanted to get into um, because these are the, the cool things that are happening here in Ohio right now. We have grants. <laughs> we have so many grant opportunities and this is this is the the absolute coolest part for me because for the, for the longest time years and years and years um apprenticeship just kind of existed um it didn't get any any funding all the programs were just voluntary 2016 was the first year that apprenticeship actually got any any type of funding um in 2019, we got a state expansion grant. Um, it was pretty much dedicated towards enhancing our systems because uh, apprenticeship grew at such a rate that the federal government realized mm, states kind of need to um, grow with <laughs> the rate of growth. So we, we really bolstered our systems. We um, enhanced our website. We're going to continue to do so, um, progressing on with more and more of these grants. Um, the 2020 grant that is out currently, we are creating, oh goodness, pre-apprenticeship pathways, and that's one of the things I'm going to get into. We are also doing a statewide um, incentive that is going to be very exciting. I'm working with the Lieutenant Governor's office because everybody loves the way the TechCred application was created. I love it too. I love the online presence of it. I love um, that, it, that it's tech-based. I love that it's um, the way it, it cycles. So why not do it with apprenticeship? But I'm also wanting to do it on the off cycle of tech cred to um, bolster the way tech cred is, is being run. So that is also in the works. Um, it's, it's been a year in the planning process and um, I'm, I'm very excited that, that I think we're gonna be able to offer businesses um, and registered apprenticeship 
registered apprenticeship, um, the opportunity to, to offset what's happening with tech cred, but provide it also in the same vein. So that's what's happening with the 2020 grant. We're on the pre-apprenticeship here shortly. And then ODGFS is applying for the 2021 grant, which is called the State Apprenticeship Expansion, Equity, and Innovation Grant. That application is actually due Monday by 4 p.m. Goodness. So that is, uh, we're working feverishly um, each evening to get that application completed and written. Uh, we are taking partner letters. We, <laughs> we are planning out um, how we're going to best use the funds. The funds are anywhere between $2 million and $10 million. Um, the state of Ohio will most likely be applying for the maximum. We'll see what we get. Um, but we are always excited to try to apply for uh, as much as we can to serve as many Ohioans in the businesses as we can. Um, sponsors in Ohio means jobs. Forgive me, I'm gonna take a sip of water because I'm talking really fast because I get very excited. <laughs> so sponsors on Ohio means jobs. On ohiomeansjobs.com, you've always been able to post jobs. Um, for the longest time, anybody could just say, I'm gonna post an apprenticeship and click a button. Well, there was a lot of scams on there and I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. So I stopped that. Um, I made it to where only registered apprenticeship sponsors can post apprenticeship opportunities on Ohio Means Jobs, so we verify those. Um, and only vetted sponsors get through. Then those that are interested in registered apprenticeship opportunities can say that they're interested in registered apprenticeship opportunities. And then those sponsors that are vetted through our office can um, search for those that are interested in the opportunities and kind of do a match. So it's, it's an interesting opportunity. It's a good opportunity for our, our registered apprenticeship sponsors to actually do their own outreach to those, those um, individuals that are interested in their opportunities. Um, we are integrating into WIOA, which is uh, our workforce services system. We are integrating even further into our Ohio Means Job Centers. And that is going to turn us over into the recognized pre-apprenticeship expansion and our hubs, which is the exciting part I'm gonna talk about next. All right, so the apprenticeship hubs. This is where, this is where I think things get exciting. Okay. I have this idea that an employer should be able to go to any member of these hubs and say, I'm interested in these services. And these members can come back to a hub and say, I have employer X, they want to have a service for apprenticeship or for a workforce service, um, workforce development services. Here's what we can do to help them create their program. And then everybody that is around that, um, around that program development can bring what they need to the table to help create their program, whether it's registered apprenticeship or recognized pre-apprenticeship. We're starting with recognized pre-apprenticeship. So what we're doing is we're having the Ohio Means Job Centers, education, business services, supporting partners, whether it's nonprofits, um, economic development, um, goodwills, any, anybody you can think of that really wants to come to the table and be part of this hub idea um, to, to be part of either a virtual space or, or even a brick and mortar space if we get to the point where we're actually open to the public again and we're actually sitting at a table again. But currently we're, we're doing things in a virtual space. But the hub idea is to Everybody's ha everybody has connections to employers. We have far too many um, resources available. Right, right. That, that we have far too many resources available that we we shouldn't be we shouldn't be so siloed. We need to be able to take what Apprentice Ohio is doing. We need to be able to take that, teach it to, teach it to our our partners, our hubs, 
have our hubs help create the programs, develop the services for that employer, and then take that, um, that program and then bring it to Apprentice Ohio. So we're reducing bottlenecks. So we are um, reducing the time for processing of programs. And so we can um, streamline the process of getting these um, programs up and off the ground. And we can um, leverage the resources and create capacity. So um, on, the, on the left there, you see what the hub structure is. And on the right, you can see from the employer interest and the request to the hub beginning the development of, of the program. Um, so once the hub starts beginning their, their own processes, their, their own working with the partners, they will start creating the program for, um, for the employer, whether it be recognized pre-apprenticeship or registered apprenticeship for an employer or both or for a group, because it's not always just an employer, they will work with Apprentice Ohio and go back and forth as much as they need to um, get the program plan to where it's ready for approval. Um, it, it can take, you know, one shot to where it's ready, or it can take, you know, a few times back and forth to where things are tweaked enough to where there it's good to go. This is where Apprentice Ohio is going to play a key role in helping to teach the hubs, how to develop the programs. What does it mean to develop a quality program? What is it that 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 Apprentice Ohio can bring to, to provide the technical assistance to teach the regulations? What is it that means that that makes it um, a quality program? What is it that we do when we come to the table that says, okay, selection process? Here's the things in regulation that we can do that. Um, says yes or no that we when, on, when we're developing a program and, and what are the gray areas that we can work with. So how can we teach that to, to a hub? Um, we want to hold virtual training sessions. We wanna hold um, like, uh, like tip Tuesdays or um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that word properly. Uh, my, I have a pre-apprenticeship uh, pre service provider who actually is, is getting things ready to hold um, monthly or bi-weekly sessions um, to where folks can sign up and, and either get technical assistance bi-weekly or if um, employers are interested in pre-apprenticeship, they can actually sign up to find out what, what is it all about, how do they start the process, um, these are things that, that we want to start doing for the hubs. And then we want to create a virtual space where the hubs can um, kind of all talk to each other. So the goal, this is, the, this is currently the, the workforce map of Ohio with all of the workforce areas. I kind of just stole it <laughs> and, and labeled it the Ohio Apprenticeship um, Hub Locations. What I would like to do is to see that the workforce areas, um, at least each workforce area has a hub. And then we can provide technical assistance to those areas, reduce the bottlenecks, and then provide that shared space for the hub to communicate. Um, that's at least what's rolling around in, in my noggin. <laughs> so this is our current apprenticeship service provider map. This is um, each person that, that is covering a service area. I know it looks like uh, the Cuyahoga, Lorraine, um, Butler, um, Hamilton, Franklin areas look pretty small, but that's because there's metros. So there's a high concentration of um, apprenticeship sponsors in those areas. So we do have one person that's covering down on those counties. Um, currently the red area that says uh, Betty Knutson, she is actually um, my new previous me, <laughs> my, the position I used to hold. Uh, so we are actually backfilling that position. We're, we're actually um, going to be interviewing here in the next few days. So very excited to continue to grow the apprenticeship team. So if you have any, in, any questions about registering a program, you can always email apprenticeship at jfs.ohio.gov. You can always reach out to the apprenticeship service provider in your area. For Franklin County, it is um, Bob O'Keefe. 
you can always email me. His field supervisor is Georgiana Lalo. Um, again, that apprenticeship inbox is a very easy place to go to get um, to get things sent out throughout the entire state. So I just want to say thank you for uh, listening to everything that's going around in, in the state of Ohio and all the good things that we have to share. Thank you, Becky, so much for sharing that information. Um, do we have any questions for Becky? She would be happy to answer those. You can put those in the chat if you like, or if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question for Becky, please feel free to do that. We do have a request for your email address again, Becky. So if you could maybe put that in the chat, that would be great. Not a problem, I can do that. Any other questions for Becky? Okay, well, thank you, Becky, so much. Um, let's see, there is a question from Roger. He would like to know what's a good source for finding ways to create pre-apprenticeship plans? What's a good source for finding ways to create pre-apprenticeship plans? Yes. Us, <laughs> contact, contact us. We can, um, we can sit down and have a conversation. Um, I'm not sure who, who is he, who he's with, but we we're happy to sit down and, and talk about ways to create those plans. Great, thank you. Absolutely. Other questions? All right, well, thank you, Becky, so much for um, being with us today. Really appreciate your efforts to expand apprenticeships and pre-apprenticeships across Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and we appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. And if any of you do have questions for Becky, um, we'll definitely share out her email address and our follow-up email as well. And we'll also share out her presentation so you have all of that information. Um, and also just as a reminder, um, we do at the ESC provide some help and assistance with connections with pre-apprenticeships and apprenticeship plans. So you can also feel free to reach out to John or I, if you have questions, we can help support you in that process as well. All right, so thank you so much. I'm gonna turn it over to John, who is going to introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Christine. And Becky, thank you so much uh, for the very informative presentation. Um, I actually, during an Apprentice Ohio meeting, uh, met uh, Todd um, Shed Medler uh, with Trilogy Health Services, and I really appreciated the um, one, the expansion of apprenticeship programs uh, that Trilogy Health Services is providing, but then the on-ramps that they're doing um, in cohort hiring uh, with alignment with pre-apprenticeships. And so I thought this would be a great compliment um, to this apprenticeship conversation. So Todd, I'm gonna turn it over to you and uh, please feel free to share your screen. Great, thanks, John. Thanks, Christine. Really appreciate the opportunity to uh, be with you guys today. Uh, great attendance, by the way. You know, we do uh, these frequently and, uh, always appreciate when uh, the group has such an impact with others that uh, people keep coming back. So thank you for your time. I'm going to go through a, a, a brief presentation, but really uh, open it up really to the, the how to. Um, as, as we all know that uh, when we get into these things, we, we usually hear great presentations uh, and we get excited. And then we walk away and we're, we get to thinking, how the heck do I really get doing going on this thing. And so uh, I'd love to open up the end of this and make sure that you know that uh, we're here just like Becky is uh, to serve your students and your organizations in finding ways to connect uh, quality students to quality experiences. Um, it's really not rocket science, uh, but it can be uh, somewhat troubling when you don't know how to take the first step or who to take it with. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start our presentation. And so just wanna show you something. Uh, you know, I think this is widely known, 
Um, but it's very important to understand from a standpoint of why is it that it's so important for us uh, to reach out and make sure that we have new pathways within healthcare. Um, it's, you know, 2.3 million uh, new healthcare workers needed by 2025. And I used to think that was a far off date uh, and uh, that is no longer a far off date to me. Uh, neither is 50 years old, by the way. Uh, you know, that used to be a really far off date for me and now it's like a year away or so. Uh, and, you know, it's humbling to think that we've had these stats out here for, for years and years about the shortage that we're gonna see in healthcare. Um, and there are so many young people who are interested in becoming uh, a part of the healthcare industry, um, but the pathways have not been clear and easy for them to be able to do that uh, in a way that engages them early on to make sure that which pathway within healthcare would be correct for them. Because there are multiple pathways within healthcare. It's not just nursing. It's not just becoming a doctor. You know, there are a lot of different things that somebody can do. Um, I want to take a step back and let you know that, uh, you know, about us. So you may not know about Trilogy Health Services, uh, but we are a senior care uh, company. Uh, we take care of seniors, elderly. Um, we have uh, 120 facilities uh, across the Midwest in uh, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan, um, about 15,000 employees, and we own the eighth largest pharmacy and a very large rehab company. We've been in business 23 years, um, and you know, often uh, I talk about this in terms of the healthcare industry. We are the stepchild of the stepchild. Uh, you know, when you think about healthcare, uh, most people think about uh, hospitals. And then they might think about like your, you know, family practice office or your GP. Uh, and then they think about nursing homes. Um, but I can tell you, we're not your grandmother's nursing home. You know, we are very nice new facilities. Uh, we are about uh, what we call the flywheel to success. Um, we believe that the flywheel to success for caring for and about, uh, you know, our residents really starts with engaging our employees. It doesn't start with the resident. It starts with the employee because the employee is actually the person that is caring for and about our resident. It's not the CEO. It's not me. You know, it is whoever's at the bedside next to that resident in that moment. And so you have to care for and about that, those individuals and give them a clear pathway so that they can see not only how they can upskill themselves, but more importantly, see a career and a future at a place that cares about them and their family. And, you know, we call it the triple bottom line. Uh, our CEO once said it to me uh, years ago. He said, our job is to make sure that our employees feel like royalty. Because when our employees feel like royalty, they will want to make sure that our residents feel like royalty, not have to because they're getting a paycheck, you know, want to because they're cared about. And then when our residents feel like royalty, they will continue to utilize our services and refer to us. And that's how we'll be able to reinvest back into our employees. It's been our success you know, over the past 23 years and the reason that we've differentiated ourselves as an organization. So let me talk a little bit about our fast track uh, apprentice program. So it, it, if you're not as familiar with apprentice, you know, Shep, you know, Becky gave a great presentation. And, and I just got to tell you, we work in all four states. Um, we are the largest healthcare apprentice program in the United States. Uh, we have 6,500 apprentices at this point. Uh, I gave a reflection point back to 2018 uh, in this slide because that was the year that we started our apprentices. Uh, our apprentice program, and we are all in on apprenticeship uh, because I think it is fundamentally a very simple thing that we all would want, which is I want our, you know, I want my employer to invest in me in a way that I can grow both from knowledge and skill. And when I show, when I show that I'm competent in knowledge and skill, I get an increased pay and responsibilities. That is not rocket science, folks. 
And I don't care what industry you're in, we all should be doing that. We all want opportunities to grow in our knowledge and skills so that we can continue to grow and especially young people. And so we started this journey and we've made it very transparent and clear to our employees what the, their pathway is. And so we started with our nurse aid program in 18, along with our culinary program, you know, and we've expanded because frankly, it works. You know, we've expanded into, you know, into life enrichment, which is activities for us, into hospitality, into environmental, into plant ops, into farm tech, into the business office. We have all of these are registered apprentice programs, and we have a desire for all of them to have pre-apprentice programs. We have two major focuses, you know, within the next two years for us organizationally. That is to develop these pathways within high schools that complement the education and opportunity that schools present to kids and give those kids real life experience on a hands-on basis that they frankly cannot get at a hospital. Hospitals won't give the hands-on experience and most of them won't give it until they're 18 years old. We can offer that at 16. We can allow them to come in and get certifications, including, you know, their STNA, you know, at the state, and we pay for all of that. And as you can see in this chart, hopefully, you could, every time that they get a, another certificate with us or certification with us, which are all national or state certifications, they get a pay raise. It's a guarantee. Those numbers besides each one of those are the minimum that they're going to get. And so it allows somebody to be in control and especially young people to see as I grow and I invest and I, you know, I get my national dementia certification, I'm going to get another quarter pay bump. You know, I'm going to get another, you know, dollar plus when I get my STNA. I'm going to get it when I get customer service, you know, certification. Whatever those things are, that's our uh, opportunity to be clear about a pathway and get people motivated in this. Almost all of these are asynchronous learning within our learning management system. That way we have visibility on their progress and we can actually report on their progress to you in any rhythm that you'd like on a weekly basis. We can show how they are progressing as well as things like their attendance and showing up to work. We can create a report for you that says, here's your cohort. And as John mentioned, one of the things we also believe strongly in is cohort modeling. And so we're not going to hire onesies, twosies. Our goal is to come in and partner, truly partner. And if you've got 20 students, we're going to hire all of them. You know, because what we found over the last three years with our high school program is, is that the number one support system that is often overlooked is the peer support system. And if you only have one or two people in an organization, they are alone more often than not. We need them to be able to communicate to each other because they won't come to us as the employer. And frankly, they probably don't come to you when they've got major issues either because they, they when they're alone, it's difficult to say that. But when they talk to each other and there's two or three or four of them that don't understand something, if they can't help each other, then someone in the group can say, we don't understand this. And as a result, we found that we get a whole lot more uh, quality education and information when we do that as a cohort. It also allows your teachers to not have to be spread amongst 10 partners to try to create an experience for your students. It, it, it is something that we believe strongly in and hopefully, you know, we get the results for your students at, at, because of that. One other thing that I'll say is that, you know, we're working right now and uh, actually Becky and I talked about this last week is from the very beginning, our goal has been to create a stackable apprentice model. So basically an apprenticeship is stackable credentials that lead to, you know, a, a, a promotion or, and pay raises. You know, our goal is we're going to be rolling out our, our, uh, our LPN apprenticeship, our LPN to RN apprenticeship, and our nurse leadership apprenticeship in the next six months. 
Um, and our goal is you come in maybe as a high school student and you work through the nurse aid. You decide that you wanna be a nurse because you've got that early experience. We help you get into nursing school. And when I say help you, we have guaranteed admittance for 350 employees every year into different nursing schools across our four states. We're not just gonna tell you we're gonna help you, we're gonna get you in. You know, and then we're rolling out a program in our nursing partnerships that it is a $25 a paycheck debt free education. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm tired of encouraging people to go to school. They come out with 20, 30, $40,000 in debt. They get a, an increase in pay and half of that increase in pay goes to paying a student loan. You know, today is a different day and we need to treat people differently. And we as an employer know that the, the future is in treating people with respect and dignity, not just our residents, but our employees. And you do that by caring for them, not only in providing them opportunities, but also in ways financially that they don't go into debt early in their life. And so those are pieces of our pie that we're rolling out right now. We have a specific high school program and a high school website. Um, I'll have Mike uh, Eichberger, who's, who's on our team, uh, put that, that link in for you so that you can go there. But you know, we found that uh, even the simplest thing like our application wasn't geared toward high school students enough. It, things like, you know, we normally ask employees, give three professional references, okay? Well, 16 year old doesn't have three professional references. I mean, so, you know, it is simple things that we've had to engineer specifically for students to enable them to be comfortable and hear the language and understand what it is that is for them. And one other thing that I'll mention is every one of our pathways are linked to, to college credit. So beyond just that they're going to get the benefits that Becky talked about with, with the high school 12 points, they are going to be eligible for college credit when they finish one of our apprentice programs. And so that is encouraging students who may be on that bubble of whether or not they can really make it in college. Our goal is to be an encouragement to them and to help connect the dots of what you've already set forth in them in your encouragement and roll that into what we do. Together, we're all going to make an impact on more students and especially those that are historically disadvantaged. Our goal is to democratize opportunities. It shouldn't matter whether you're male, female, it shouldn't matter what your race is. It shouldn't matter whether you're a first time college student, you know, a generation college student. Those things are opportunities for us to improve the likelihood of success based off of caring for and about our employees. Last but not least, I, I, I wanted to give you this slide, you know, to show you we're not new at this game. We're very good at this game, you know, uh, and, you know, in the past, since 2018, we've awarded over 11,000 certifications to our employees. Our goal is to really touch the lives. That's 11,000 pay raises outside of our quarterly pay raise. So all of our hourly workers get quarterly pay raises guaranteed. In addition to that, every time that they earn a certificate, they earn their own pay raise and get the pride of knowing that they did that. They accomplished that. Nobody gave that to them. They earned it. And I believe that that's part of the, the secret sauce to encouraging people to grow is to give them pride in the thing that they earned as opposed to giving them what they did not earn. And so, you know, hopefully that gave you some quick overview uh, of our program. Um, I'd, I'd love to take questions. Uh, Mike, if you wanna add a few comments about, you know, kind of the feet on the street of how we actually do what we do. Um, I think it's a good idea for us to always uh, connect those dots. Let me see if I can. While Mike is talking, I was going to put our, can you see my website, our, our website now? Uh, hopefully. This explains the program. If you're an educator, you know, we've got information specifically students apply. These are the, you know, kind of what they can expect. 
and even down to what we can offer your school at no charge for their freshman and sophomore years, you know, their junior and senior, what can we do from an education standpoint? What can they do from a volunteer standpoint? We have really developed this out within our facilities. And, you know, we have 27 facilities in Ohio and, and several in your area that are just waiting for good quality students to come in and start their journey within healthcare, whether that be on the clinical side or the non-clinical side, we want to show them that there's a pathway in healthcare. Christine, thank you for that note, by the way. That's awesome to see you in here. Um, my name is Mike Eichberger. I'm manager of our workforce uh, development and apprenticeship programs. And um, pretty much as Todd was saying, kind of the soldier out in the field uh, with our, with, um, you know, our high schools uh, and the students that we are talking to as potential, um, you know, employees with us, as I would say, apprentices with us. Um, you know, I, I spoke yesterday at a uh, leader roundtable that we have for all of our campuses. Um, and the mood in the room was, we're tired, we're exhausted, we are, you know, we're at our wits end with COVID and everything that's been going on. Um, and the one thing that they could not say enough about was our high school students that came in and gave a little bit of extra support, gave a little bit extra energy. Um, they brought some new life into the campus. They brought some life into our residents. Um, and so even if anything at all, like they never completed the certification, that alone in itself during this past year, um, you know, they told me that was well worth it. Just that in general with them bringing energy, new life into the campus during a hard time um, was pretty awesome to hear. Um, and so they, you know, they had seven high school students come in during the middle of COVID. Um, a lot of high school students kind of stayed away from that and, and we, you know, we understand that, but at the same time, um, you know, these students in high school, whether they're high school or college students, they, they bring in an extra added value um, to our campuses in many ways that a lot of us don't see on an everyday basis. Um, but, you know, when you throw in the apprenticeship program and the apprenticeship tracks into what they're already learning and getting to, to do, um, you're just adding a cherry on top for someone who may not have been able to see themselves going to college. And so Todd talks, you know, about all of this is, you know, certified, it's registered with the states. Um, I would say 95, if not almost every single one of our tracks is some form of a college class or part of a college class program. So when students or employees come to us and they think to themselves, I, I'm not smart enough to go to college. I don't have the money to go to college. I don't have anything to go and get these certifications. At the end of the day, when they complete that, we tell them, look, you can do this because you just did. You just completed a college class. You've got 26 hours of college credit that you're walking away with by completing this. You've got, and so when you turn it and flip it on that, you know, their eyes open up, they get real excited, they get big. And then they're like, where do I go next? I wanna do this LPN program. Or then, you know, out of the 785 people that said they wanted to go into our LPN to RN program. It's so it, building those pathways and, and building it to where you can see the light at the end of the tunnel before you get started is something we try to do um, to show them that there is that opportunity to get to the other end. Um, and high school students have, you know, an awesome platform and opportunity to be able to showcase their skills, showcase what, you know, they're, they're capable of doing, but also having that um, carrot at the top um, for a great job in education. Um, and at the end of it, certifications and hopefully licenses continue to grow, so. Well, and I think there's two things that Mike hit on that I'd like to just make sure that we provide clarity around. Number one is COVID, you know, uh, and, you know, you may not realize this, but we are probably the safest workplace that a high school student can go to now. We were the first to be hit by COVID in the nursing homes, and we have the most regulated testing of any industry. Right now, we have 16,000 employees. We have five positive employees out of 16,000. We have 90% of our residents across 120 facilities are all vaccinated. You know, we offer that free of charge for our people on site. 
you know, and so we screen and temperature check every single person that goes into our building. If you haven't been into our buildings, you wouldn't know infection control is extremely serious. And why it is that we are even more vaccinated in a safer place in hospitals is because those are transient people coming in and out of a hospital. Our people live with us. You know, they don't, go, when I say 90%, it didn't flip over every three days to have a brand new group of, of, of patients in. Our people aren't called patients. They're called residents because they live with us. So when they're vaccinated, they're vaccinated. That's why we're seeing such a, an amazing response with regards to the lowering of how many people have COVID related in our business. The second thing is Mike mentioned, uh, you know, 26 credit hours. That's actually our culinary program, you know. And so you may not have one of these programs yet. You know, you may not have a culinary program, but you wanted one or you're having trouble finding a teacher. You know, we partner with nationally recognized industry certifications. In the culinary side, it's a, a company called Ruby, R-O-U-B-X-E. Uh, and they are the premier provider of content in culinary. They do Marriott, Ritz Carlton, Whole Foods, every one of them are, their people are trained by this content. It is not cheap. It is not cheap, no joke, but it is high quality. And if you've ever been to uh, a healthcare facility, you know that there are a lot of things that people don't know when they go in, nobody anticipated going into a healthcare facility January 1, you know, but you know what everybody knows? They know whether or not that they got good food. You mess up somebody's food, you are not only, you know, hurting satisfaction, you are hurting their health because food is one of the key components to getting healthy and staying healthy. And so we invest a significant amount in our culinary programs. And so if you've ever thought, man, we'd love to, you know, expand our culinary program or start a culinary program. How do we get started? We already have the content. We will give you the content for your people through, through our partnership. You know, it's an, an amazing opportunity for us to collaborate together. And so, and when they get done with that apprenticeship, they have earned 26 hours of college credit toward a, is it a 64 hour I think it's 64 hour associates in culinary arts at Jefferson and Community Technical College in, in Louisville, Kentucky, you know, uh, and the rest of those classes are all online on demand and we pay for. So I, I, I'd love to answer any questions that you guys might have or any thoughts that you, you can think of. Please feel free, if you have those uh, questions, you can put them in chat, uh, or you can just go ahead and, uh, and ask those questions directly to Todd or Mike. Well, in a, um, as the, the rest of the meeting goes on, if you do have um, any questions um, uh, for, for any of the presenters, uh, please feel free to put those uh, in the chat and we'll make sure that we, um, we address that before we conclude today. Uh, Todd and Mike, thank you so much uh, for being with us today and uh, sh sharing this, um, this, you know, this on-ramp and, and this, um, you know, opportunity for, for, for our youth and then just for our community members in general that are looking to step into healthcare. So uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. Thanks a lot. Um, our, you bet. Thank you. Um, our, our, our next guest today is uh, Kristen Ankrum. Uh, Kristen uh, is the work-based learning coordinator uh, at, Worthy, at um, Canal Winchester High School. And uh, Kristen has um, uh, strong partnerships um, in multiple industries um, around the community. Um, but in particular, I wanted her to share a little bit about the relationship she has um, with a healthcare provider she has right, right there in Canal. And then, um, you know, just a give her a chance to share a little bit about that. So uh, Kristen, the floor is yours. Thank you, John, and thanks for having me this morning. So who all wants to go work for Trilogy now? <laughs> Hands? No, just kidding. I don't wanna work there either. <laughs> um, I'm kidding, that was a great presentation. Um, I found myself having to give like a lot of deep breaths because this is so exciting. Um, really, 
I told John today, I was just gonna kind of talk at the story level. So what you've heard from Apprentice Ohio and then Trilogy and how that has trickled down um, to the high school level. I apologize if you hear some background noise. There are some students out there playing music and celebrating somebody's birthday. So um, if you hear that, I apologize. Um, so we, um, I was hired in 2018 to really kind of develop what then we just called an internship program. Um, and obviously this has turned into um, much bigger things than just getting students into internships. Um, through our local chamber of commerce, I met Valerie Griggs, who I believe is still on the meeting today, um, who was at that time at Alter Care here in Canal Winchester. And I approached her um, to see how we could get students to get their STNA. At any time I survey our students, right around 70 to 75% of our students are interested in the healthcare field, um, rather that be nursing or um, Brain surgeon is something I see a lot. I don't, I don't know why that seems so popular. And I never ever thought that I would be a brain surgeon, but it seems to be a popular thing right now. Um, so any student that I have who's interested in healthcare, um, I talk to them about getting their foot in the door. And I think anybody who works with students right now um, know that they don't really understand what that means. I love when Trilogy talks about fast track because teenagers like instant gratification, right? Like they want to like, get in and, and start moving and um, make money. Um, we hear that a lot. So I talked to Valerie about ways that we can just get our students, get their foot in the door, um, get them some initial training. And we kind of developed our own program here um, just between Alter Care and Canal Winchester High School, uh, where our students left school for two weeks Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, and went to Alter Care to complete um, their STNA course. Um, they are, sorry, it is really distracting out there right now. I feel like I should pause and tell them to turn it off. Um, they are, there were eight students who went and they were all in a class together, which was nice. And I think um, Todd kind of alluded to that, like having their peer support there um, in the room was, was really good. Um, so they, we had eight students who participated and I believe four of the students passed the state test to become um, STNAs. And I believe at that time, three were hired full time, um, which was pretty exciting for us. Um, it's always good to see um, students who are able to kind of get through that whole process. Some students attempted to, to pass the test and didn't, others just kind of didn't take that next step for whatever reason. They may have figured out that it wasn't exactly what they wanted to do. Um, we um, had a parent meeting and really talked to parents about what their students were going to see um, and experience, like they're going to be doing hands-on clinical work. So we wanted parents to be clear about what that meant and, and things that their students were actually going to be doing. Um, I kind of spent that time while they were in the class going there too and being like a, a liaison. So sat down with the students while they were having their lunch um, and really kind of just had conversations with them. And it was a safe moments for them to freak out and be like, oh my gosh, Mrs. Ingram, you're not going to believe what I saw today. Um, and then they would talk to me about it. And we had conversations about like, you know, this isn't a glamorous job. You are going to see things that are uncomfortable um, and are gross and, <laughs> and those types of things. And um, really kind of grounding them a little bit because they were, they, they got scared and they got freaked out by things that they were seeing. Um, so having that relationship and being able to just go in and sit down and have those safe conversations, I think really um, contributed to their to that success, um, just keeping them on track. Um, when I talked about finding out what it what it is that they don't want to do, I, I always tell my Tori story, as I call it. Um, Tori was interested in being an STNA. And from the moment I sent out the initial information and um, just to ask about interest, she was on me like every day. When's the class? When's the class? How can I sign up? How can I sign up? 
I mean, she would come find me. She would track me down in the hallways. She was all about it. I want to be a nurse. I want to be a nurse. I'm going to nursing school. I want to do this. Um, she went through the class. She did fine through the class. She got hired. Um, I think she worked a weekend shift. And then on Monday, I saw her in the halls and she said, Mrs. Ingram, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay. And she said, I was on, at my shift on Saturday or whatever. And I just sat in the bathroom and cried because I realized I can't do this. And I'm like, well, that's okay. Like, that's fine. She's, and she was so worried that she was going to let us down and disappoint us. But she realized through that experience that this was not for her. And that is so important for our students. Um, and frankly, as a parent who is paying for kids to go to college, like to realize what it is that you don't want to do. So she decided I'm going to go with my plan B, which is PR and marketing. And I'm like, that's perfect, right? Um, so just having her having that experience here in her high school um, really not only saved her thousands of dollars, um, but really kind of gave her that exposure to know what it really was and, and what she did not want to do. Um, uh, so I always tell her story because she was so worried and that people were going to be disappointed in her. And, and you know, we had to like really kind of just share with her that that's totally what this is about. It's understanding what it is that you want to do. And if this isn't what you want to do, then let's find something else. Um, I think, I think that's about all I have. Um, Valerie, did, I don't know. Are you still on? I think she's on. I don't know if she's still on or not. Um, she, um, I just kind of told her about this yesterday. So I was hoping she'd be here to. It, it looks to like she may have hopped off. Christine. Yeah, she probably did. So that's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this year, um, obviously last year we didn't do much because of COVID. Um, but this year we had the students go online and do the six hour um temporary nurse aid certificate program. It was kind of a self-paced thing. I believe the Department of Medicaid put it out because of COVID. Um, and we had about six students complete that. So we are um, currently finding a path for those six students who completed their temporary nurse aid. Um, and we have met with Trilogy and um, looking forward to continuing that discussion to see how we can get those students engaged. Um, I would say at a district level, you know, we're a traditional high school. We don't have, we're not a career tech high school. Um, so it's really important to have your leadership on board and be able to do whatever it takes to make it happen. You know, we offered transportation for students who didn't have transportation. Um, uh, and that was something that seems little, but um, it was actually a lot of work to figure out how to make that work. So. Um, just kind of thinking about all of those different things and having your building leadership on board and willing to focus on what you can do and not why we can't do something. Fantastic. Kristen, thank you so much. Yeah. If anybody has any questions uh, for Kristen, again, please uh, feel free to put that in the chat. Um, and if not now, maybe uh, for the duration of the meeting. And uh, I'm sure Kristen will be able to answer that at the end if something comes up. Again, uh, thank you to all of our presenters this morning. Christine. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Um, and again, thank you to all of our presenters. We wanted to highlight um, all the different types of programs that are happening. Um, you know, Kristen's program looks a little different than what Trilogy's program looks like. And we just really wanted to showcase that there are lots of ways that you can approach this work and create experiences for students. So I really appreciate all of the presenters sharing the work that they're doing um, because it's important work. So we wanted to just now kind of move into some of the things that have been happening in between our meetings. Um, we have some very dedicated work groups that have been meeting on a monthly basis, um, making all of these things happen. And I want to express my appreciation to all of you that serve on those work groups. Um, one of those work groups is a parent awareness work group. That was a goal that our business advisory council set is that we really wanted to increase awareness amongst parents of all of these different pathways. I've heard so many comments that parents aren't aware of all the different types of opportunities 
that are out there for students now. Um, and a lot of that was shown today. There are so many different ways that students can earn college credit, can work, can get experience, can kind of get those first steps into careers. Um, so the goal of this group was really to think about how do we share that information out with parents and how do we increase their knowledge and awareness of how high school can look and those opportunities for their students. Um, so I'm gonna share some of the work that's come out of that work group. One of those things is a coffee chats that we've partnered with at the core to present. There was actually one um, yesterday evening, if you were able to participate in that. Um, I sat in on it, it was excellent. Um, and really just talk through as a parent, um, how do you really help your student explore those careers that are out there? H how do you help them determine what might be a good path for them? And, and really know, okay, I'm entering into high school. How do I help myself and my student understand these are the steps and these are the classes and these are the opportunities that we might want to take advantage of. So I really appreciate all of you who shared out these events with your parents. That was a request that I made of you. Um, that was very helpful if you shared that information in your parent newsletters and on social media. Um, that really helped us reach a larger audience of parents. We do have another um, session coming up next week on the 28th at 6.30, if you would like to share that out with your parents as well. We'll put the link in the chat that has um, a web page that has the registration and all the information on the events that I'm speaking to right now. Um, and then all of these events are going to be recorded because we want to make sure that this can be a resource for you to utilize with your parents and, and with you know, business and industry partners, if you would like to utilize those as well, that would be wonderful. Um, and we'll keep a repository of all of these things so that you can use them for parent events or just as resources for yourself um, when you're having these conversations with parents. We also have partnered with Columbus State um, to do an event during In-Demand Jobs Week. If you're not familiar with In-Demand Jobs Week, that's coming up in the first week of May. And that's a state of Ohio initiative that basically highlights all of these different in-demand occupations um, and really puts a focus on all of the opportunities that are available within these different in-demand job sectors. Um, so this event, we're actually having kind of a kickoff um, discussion of, again, how you can help to support your student in entering these in-demand occupations. And then we're gonna actually have some breakout rooms, which we're super excited about in these four different sectors, um, advanced manufacturing, hospitality and culinary, information technology and healthcare, because those are really the in-demand job sectors in central Ohio. And we're going to have employers in those breakout rooms um, speak to some of the things they're looking for, you know, helping parents and students understand if they want to enter into this sector, some of the things they can be doing now. Um, and we actually have the May 3rd event geared towards the younger students. Um, so current eighth graders, ninth graders, and 10th graders. And then the May 5th event is geared towards our juniors and seniors because that conversation is a little different depending on where your student is in the educational pathway. Um, so we would love for you to share this information and event with your parents and students. And um, of course, you're welcome to join in as well. Um, and on that website, you can find all the links to register for those events. Another thing that we are creating as part of this work group is really that communication toolbox. Um, and this will be just a repository of resources that you can utilize to help communicate our, our shared message about all these different multiple pathways and opportunities that are now available to students. Um, so I already shared with you some parent conversations. Um, we're also going to put some resources in there that you can utilize to assist with these kinds of events. Um, we're working on creating a video series that's highlighting some of our local employers and talking about what are those job opportunity, opportunities locally. So like within our local businesses and employers, what are some of the things that students can do? Um, what are those in-demand occupations that are there? 
And then we're doing a social media campaign where our communications department is just creating some social media posts that you can pick up and utilize in your social media if you would like to, to help um, again, share out this common message. And then we're also creating a series of videos just highlighting career exploration, engagements and experiences of all these really awesome experiences that are happening across our districts in Central Ohio, highlighting that for parents in a video type of format. So again, it's engaging to parents and they can quickly pick up a lot of that information and knowledge. Um, so you can see the website on um, the slides and we'll share that out and we'll also put that in the chat. And then there's also an in-demand jobs week event map that we added our Columbus State event to. Um, and those are just all of the events that are happening across Central Ohio during that first week of May. So you may wanna check that out too, or if you have an event um, that you're thinking about that you might like to host or, or do, and that's for our employer partners and our district partners, um, you can add that to that map and that just adds to the visibility of, of what you're trying to share and do. So this group has been meeting monthly for quite a while. Um, we've put a lot of ask on them. So I really appreciate their partnership. And I also really appreciate your partnership and sharing this out with your parents and your families um, because we can create all of the opportunities that we want. But if we don't get that knowledge out to our parents and students to partake of those opportunities, it won't be as successful as we would like it to be. Um, so thank you so much for all of your work on that. Um, we are also doing a radio advertising campaign to highlight all of these different opportunities um, so that parents, again, we're trying to reach them in all different manner. Um, so you'll see the different radio stations that are highlighted on here. Um, it shows you when those ads will actually be running. And if you're curious, you can also click on that link to hear that radio ad um, and kind of hear the message that we're sending. And that was part of the um, work group as well, was to create that shared message. What is it that we're trying to communicate to our parents about the work that we're doing? So check that out. Um, we're excited and we're hopeful that that will reach another group of parents that maybe we hadn't engaged before. Um, another thing that I wanted to share with you, and maybe you were aware of this, um, through the Business Education Leader Awards, they were actually looking at business advisory councils and looking at their work they're doing and presenting these awards based on three quality practices. One is excellence in developing professional skills for future careers, um, building partnerships and coordinating career development experiences. Um, we were very excited that our council received a three-star award. The awards were very limited. There were only, I believe, 12 that received the three-star and just three that received the four-star. And there were a lot of applications across the state of Ohio um, because there are a lot of business advisory councils across the state of Ohio. So it basically just illustrates um, our appreciation for the work that you're doing um, in partnership with us, because this is really your award, not our award, um, because it highlights the strength of the partnerships that we've been able to develop um, and the great things that we have been able to do because of you leaning into this work. Um, so we just wanted to share that with you. Um, and just acknowledge that it's because of your partnership that we were able to receive this award. So next, um, John's going to share some exciting news that we actually just learned this week, which was great timing, um, about a pilot program that our Business Advisory Council was selected to take part in. And so as Billy Mays would say in those famous uh, advertising commercials, but wait, there's more. And um, our Business Advisory Council uh, applied for a high school tech internship pilot program that's being sponsored uh, by, by three organizations throughout the state. Uh, the uh, Governor's Office of Workforce Transformation, the Department of Services Agency, and the Ohio Department of Education. And they, they know that they're taking a model of tech cred, knowing that they need to build and continue to increase awareness 
and, and participation in our information technology fields here in the state of Ohio. Uh, so they've created this high school tech internship pilot program. Uh, we've applied uh, knowing that we're gonna be able to partner with uh, school partners um, and our employer partners. Um, the, this pilot, um, they are budgeting to allow for up to 100 uh, interns uh, throughout the state. So um, there were 12 awardees Two here in the in the um, uh, central region, and I don't know if I didn't see if Steve Colley from Tolls, uh, Steve Colley and his team were also awarded uh, this pilot program, and um, and the goal is for each of the uh, pilot sites to be able to coordinate with anywhere from one up to eighteen, but they're looking for an average of about eight um, interns uh, for approximately one hundred and fifty hours and that um, this pilot program will reimburse up to $12 per hour uh, during the internship program. And so we're, we're super excited to be um, one. I, we were, again, one of many uh, uh, applicants and that uh, because of the partnerships and the, and the robust uh, relationships that our Business Advisory Council has that we've been awarded this opportunity. Uh, I will uh, say that if there are any companies here, again, we, we've got a small, um, pool of, of interns, but uh, we're all, always looking to expand the business relationships that are willing to host an IT high school intern. Um, and the, I will share that the state is really um, adding um, extra dollars to those that are 16 and 17 for those high school internships, as opposed to still re uh, a partial reimbursement for 18 and 19 year olds, but they're really wanting those uh, underclassmen um, transition to upperclassmen uh, to have those employment opportunities. And then while on um, that internship, if they can align themselves with an industry recognized credential, uh, there's an added SPIF um, associated with this funding model, uh, extra $100 per employer. So um, uh, we're again, uh, the Lieutenant Governor announced this yesterday uh, on social media and we were super excited to be a part of this. Um, if you, again, if you're interested um, in hosting a summer intern, a uh, summer IT intern, uh, when you get this presentation, uh, you can uh, do a link um, or you can just email me and uh, I'll be glad to help coordinate with you. So yeah, so our business advisory council keeps on rocking and rolling. Christine had mentioned, you know, some of the goals that the business advisory council um, is trying to meet. Um, and one of that w w has been our parent community engagement. Uh, and the awareness element. And so we're asking you, uh, Business Advisory Council members, um, where should we go next? Um, we have a, a variety of options to choose from, and uh, there's a link, and I think Christine's gonna put the link in the chat um, so you can get that, um, or actually maybe I could do that. Um, and we'd like you to take a moment Oh, no, no, my text is <laughs> little technology here. Let me just get that one moment. And I'd, I'd like to please, if you could, um, fill in this quick survey and let us know where you would like us to um, exert our energy and where you'd like to be able to participate side by side. Um, with, you know, we have two established work groups. Do we need to build more? You know, we have our, our um, work-based um, learning work group. We have our parent uh, awareness work group. Um, and certainly, yes, as, um, um, you know, whether at a district level, as an employer level, um, please, we're, we're, we're looking for your input on how we can best serve, um, you know, serve the region uh, with this business advisory council. You know, we know that we've, um, We've had some good presentations this past year on our uh, expanding pre-apprenticeship programs. Um, if that's an area you want us to continue in, then um, what maybe what areas? You know, um, do we need to build out more IT, more business? Um, you know, let us know, um, please. And um, yes, if there's an opportunity for you to. Um, to do that, uh, thank you so much. I see so far, uh, I, I love this uh, um, 
uh, fun drive type mentality here. Uh, we, we, we've got seven, eight of you, eight of you replied uh, thus far um, on this survey. So if you could just take a minute to, to fill in that link and, and give us your, um, your ideas, uh, we welcome that. And also uh, in the other field where you could put something in, you know, sh share if maybe if it's something that you want to be a part of and, and walk alongside us uh, in this work. We, uh, we, um, we are better together, that is for sure. Thank you. And, and we really appreciate you taking the time to fill this out because this will help us with our future planning. Um, because as I shared, this really is our last business advisory council meeting for, for this particular cycle. And as we move into thinking about next year, we want to make sure that this continues to be something that is useful to you, um, that supports the ideas and the programming and the goals of your district or organization. So please add as much detail as you would like to the feedback because that really helps to support John and I in our planning. Um, so thank you for filling that out. We appreciate it. Um, and really that concludes our business advisory council meeting for this morning. Um, this is both of our contact information. So if you have questions or if you want more information about anything we talked about this morning, please feel free to reach out to either one of us. Um, we will also send out after the meeting um, a recording of the meeting, all of the presentations that were shared today, and also all of the contact information for everyone that presented in case you would like to talk with them directly and ask questions that came up after the presentations this morning. Um, so at this point, um, thank you for joining us. I hope you have the rest of the day goes well. Um, and if you have any questions for John and I, we'll stay on here for a few minutes um, in case you would like to ask anything additional. Thanks, everybody. Have a great summer. We'll see you in the fall. <laughs>